now we have seen the the color coding of the carbon resistors and now we come to the temperature dependence of resistivity <coughs> okay the temperature dependence the temperature dependence of resistivity <coughs> of 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 resistivity 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 okay now let us try to understand what happens is we saw the resistance changing with the temperature okay but we saw that resistance was also equal to rho l upon a now this does not change with temperature this does not change with temperature so it must be this which is changing with temperature it, it must be this rho that changes with temperature and it is this rho change in rho with respect to temperature that actually leads to so so this this that's why we are discussing the change in resistivity and not change in resistance because whatever happens here gets automatically reflected here correct okay <clears throat> fine now we we'd like to see and, and we'll not be able to analyze until and unless we draw the 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 temperature versus resistance curve right now if i draw the temperature versus resistance curve so i then i can also draw the resistivity versus temperature curve right so so the way r is changing is is the same way the rho is changing right so we we normally we normally track r r and this is how we convert it in terms of resistivity right get that so so let us say i have a, a conductor i'll i'll draw it for a conductor for a semiconductor okay okay it seems to be slightly inclined not exactly 90 so and okay so this is a a conductor this is a conductor This is a semiconductor. This is a semiconductor. And this is an insulator. This is an insulator. Semiconductor is something you conduct the Semiconductor is something, uh, yeah, uh, which, which does not conduct fully. We, we will come into that right so, so now let us let us try to 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 draw this with respect to the temperature right so okay so so this is resistivity this is nothing but resistivity multiplied by 10 to the power minus 8 or 12 okay ohm meter right I, I'm doing this for for copper okay and so for copper I have this it, it moves from about about this to point four into ten by minus eight in the span of some 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 say this is one fifty okay and this is 
100 and say this is 50 and we are talking about temperature in in in, in centigrade okay so temperature not in centigrade rather in kelvin we, we talk about temperature in kelvin this is how it varies for for copper right now for a semiconductor as well as an insulator it drops like that <coughs> and, and, and that is that's pretty shocking okay for for alloys like nichrome okay if, if I'm talking about an alloy called called nichrome I'm talking about an alloy called nichrome it's almost a straight line okay there's a linear movement and and there is something that 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 you'll marvel at this if this is 1.10 right this is 1.10 and then this is this is 1.20 but but within a span of 800k this this unit is in terms of 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 micro this is this is into 10 to the power minus 6 okay this is 10 into this is 10 okay so this is 10 into 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 10 to the power minus 6 okay ohm meter okay it has gone from from so 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 this this and this from 200k to to 800k from between this the change is only so much this is for a nichrome wire this is a nichrome wire what is nichrome it is it is made up of of nickel nickel and and chromium and you you you'll see that its resistivity is higher no it is into 10 to the power minus 6 while copper had only only 10 to the power minus 8 so they are used in in high resistance applications right like like where the, they're used in high resistance applications high resistance applications resistance application yeah, it, it, it is constant and, and the change is very less, even, right? Even the I percentage increase, change is very small, yeah? No, you, you cannot keep on increasing because the point will come where it will start melting. Okay, and that will be the end of it. Okay? It has high melting point. Yeah, high resistance and, and, and used in high heat applications like like, yeah. like iron coils, iron and heater coils, iron heater geyser coils right geyser coils okay that is the second thing the third thing the third thing about this is is they do not oxidize easily doesn't oxidize easily Okay, it does not oxidize easily. So what happens when, when it is at a high temperature, it is heating the room, it does not get oxidized because the moment it gets oxidized, it will start deteriorating and the coil will burn out after some time. 
right? It will start getting thinner and the resistance will go up and, and, and then, then, then that's the end to it. We also want, want it has a pretty constant R resistance with respect to the temperature. Because what happens with respect to temperature? Because what happens? You, you have applied it across, say, say a 220 volt supply, right? A 220 volt supply, which behaves as a 220 volt DC that, that you'll learn when we go to the AC. So, so, so this is a heater. Okay, and, and what is the power output of this heater? It is, it is, it is V square upon R. It's as simple as that. Okay, it's V square upon R. So, so what happens? If R starts changing, and suppose I have fixed it at 1 kilowatt, so, so let us say this is 1000, okay? If this starts changing wildly, then your power output starts changing, understand? Now suppose it becomes higher, then what happens? This becomes lower. I would not like that to happen, that I, I promised someone to provide 1 kilowatt of, of energy, Okay, and after some time, due to the heating of the coil, I am providing only say, say 600 watt. Okay, so, so in these applications, this becomes very useful because the, the percentage change in resistance is not much. So you will be able to design it as per the voltage voltage uh, voltage that is that that's available in the locality, right? So so this becomes important there. Now, okay, so so. Copper was pretty non-linear sort of increase. Here it was a linear increase, but the, the percentage increase was very, very small. That was fine. That was good with conductors. But semiconductors, they, they so in both the cases, the, the, the resistance will increase. But in semiconductors and insulators, we see that the resistivity goes down with the temperature. Okay. Now, why must that be happening? Okay. <clears throat> Why must that be happening? And the answer is in the 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 answer is in the conductivity applications that we had seen. Okay, we had found out that conductivity of 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 of, of, a, of a material is nothing but one upon resistivity. What is that equal to? <clears throat> What was that equal to? We had set up set up it in in this relation. J is equal to sigma E and found out the value, right, of sigma. And the value was was M upon N E square tau. See, if you if you forget it, <coughs> you should be able to readily readily get it, right? And how do you get it? How do you get it? We had I was equal to N E A V D. V D was nothing but I upon A. I bring this this here. I upon A will become N E into what was V D? V D was E E upon M tau. Yes. Right? So this became J and this became N E square. <coughs> e square. Tau upon okay e okay <coughs> so so this is my row right this is my row my my conductivity and this is equivalent to what j is equal to sigma e so I have my rho is equal to is equal to 1 upon conductivity okay 1 upon conductivity and conductivity is this right yes. this this whole thing is my conductivity so you take the reciprocal of that so, so m upon any square tau that is rho <coughs> right this is my resistivity now now let us try to analyze this because whatever must be happening must have a cause and the cause lies in the microscopic phenomena right so so i have i have in my conductor the the n the number of free electrons does not depend on temperature okay because the 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 ambient is, is so 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 
enough so much enough for it that all the electrons that had to come out as free electrons they are already floating around all electrons all almost all electrons the valence obviously the valence band electrons right not the not the not the deeper electrons so 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 this remains constant for a for a conductor so i am trying to 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 construct the theory for a conductor so for a conductor the first thing that happens is that n remains a uh, constant okay n remains a constant m remains a constant e remains a constant they are universal constants so so what must be happening as you increase the temperature and it's a solid so it starts vibrating at its position the, the molecules they start vibrating at its position and due to this what happens no, they start vibrating the electrons start moving faster and they start colliding more often so the tau tau goes down okay the relaxation time goes down why because because the collision increases collision collision becomes more frequent becomes frequent and why yeah because the the electron velocity goes up velocity goes up <coughs> they're traveling faster right now this tau goes up so what will happen <coughs> as tau goes 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 down not up right i'm sorry as tau goes down rho goes up vd also goes up the electron velocity no there's no vd here right they are all taken into account everything is taken into account it comes in the terms of in terms of tau everything is is taken because i have converted this vd rd here right correct and then that's the advantage of uh, kind of understanding the the derivations right you do not have to remember and then then you can make more fruitful an analysis now we come to a semiconductor or an insulator a semiconductor or 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 an insulator or an insulator what happens here 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 to the tau goes down tau decreases but what happens due to the change in temperature more and more electrons from the valence band tend to move to the conduction band okay an electron here actually tends to move here and creates a corresponding hole at this point it creates a corresponding hole at this point another one here moving from the valence band creates a corresponding hole out there out there hole okay and both in in a semiconductor both these holes as well as the as the, as the electrons both of them contribute to the conduction of electricity they they are they are vacancies okay electrons are bonded okay through a bond now what happens they 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 have become free so the vacancy that gets created here is called the hole in a semiconductor and and these vacancies also play a role in conduction why because because maybe if if this is silicon okay and and you say it's bonded like that these two comprising one bond then what happens the electron here that has a propensity that has a tendency to move to this hole and that creates a hole there which can make this move from here to here which can then make create a hole there and then make this to move from here to here so the holes the vacancies in the bond they also create they also they also promote conduction okay so so this is what happens here so so though tau goes down n increases increases a lot so much so that and 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 
if, if say this decreases by 10% and this increases by 30%, what happens? There is an there there is an there is a decrease. There is a net decrease. Lead increase a lot, leading to a net decrease to a net decrease in in the resistivity. And hence you get something like this. You get this. All you get this. Get that. Correct? This is what happens, right? So, so this is what happens, and and the same thing happens with a with an insulator. So so you see, the, in an insulator and a semiconductor, the the resistivity actually decreases with temperature, unlike the conductor or its or or or, or, or its alloy. So so in in semiconductor, let, let me use a little color. Okay. So in a in a semiconductor in a semiconductor in a semiconductor and an insulator conductor and an insulator the resistivity decreases with increase in temperature Okay. 